one of the most interesting questions actually for the function of PCSK9 <laughs> is its potential role beyond the, its role in the, in, liver, in the liver. The clear paradigm for the action of PCSK9 is that PCSK9 is a protease secreted by the liver that bind to the LDL receptor in the liver, don't regulate its expression, and so increase the level of LDL cholesterol homeostasis. And this mechanism of action leads to the development of PCSK9 inhibitors. But what about the role of PCSK9 in the other organ? I think there is some lot of data in in vitro study or in mouse models suggesting that PCSK9 can play a role in the intestine. Indeed, PCSK9 is expressed in the intestine at high level, mainly in the proximal intestine. And as observed in the liver, PCSK9 is regulated by cholesterol level, cholesterol depletion. PCSK9 expression is increased in the intestine in response to statins. And in my lab, we demonstrated that PCSK9 knockout mice have a reduced postprandial hyperlipidemia, suggesting that PCSK9 inhibition could lead to a reduced postprandial hypertriglyceridemia that could contribute to a cardiovascular protective effect. And the mechanism of action of this reduction of postprandial hypertriglyceridemia is not fully known, but there are some data in vitro in KECO2 cells suggesting that PCSK9 can increase the expression and secretion of ApoB, and also that PCSK9 can also modulate the ties. What is the ties? The ties is a new route to excrete cholesterol through the intestine, not through the bilary pathway, but directly from the blood to the intestine. And we demonstrated that PCSK9 is able to downregulate the ties. And so, in PCSK9 deficient mice, we observe an increase in ties that also could contribute to decrease LDL cholesterol level with PCSK9 inhibitors. That, that is a, actually the knowledge concerning the role of PCSK9 in the intestine. PCSK9 is also expressed in the kidney, and one team suggests using in vitro data that PCSK9 could downregulate the sodium transporter ENAC, suggesting perhaps that PCSK9 inhibitors can upregulate in ENAC and so increase blood pressure. This was not observed in clinical trial. And recently, we performed some studies in mice, in PCSK9 deficient mice. We measure blood pressure in baseline and also in stress condition, either with mouse model of salt dependent and salt independent hypertension. And we did not observe any difference in terms of sodium homeostasis and blood pressure in PCSK9 knockout mice. So these data are reassuring concerning the development of PCSK9 inhibitors. One other potential role of PCSK9 beyond the liver is the role of PCSK9 in islet, pancreatic islet of Langerhans. Indeed, PCSK9 is expressed in this islet. PCSK9 is able to downregulate, as in the liver, the level of LDL receptor expression in islet, suggesting that it could perhaps lead to a lipotoxic effect. But once again, using PCSK9 deficient mice, both in vivo and ex vivo, we did not retrieve any deleterious effect of PCSK9 deficiency on glucose homeostasis in mice. I think the data in, in human are based on two approaches. The first approach is patient with mutation, the genetic uh, proof of concept study, not, uh, especially in patient with PCSK9 loss of function. And there are very few patients with, who are fully deficient for PCSK9. The groups of LNOPS report uh, the case of uh, women who had uh, heterozygous, a uh, compound heterozygous PCSK9 loss of function mutation. So she has not, no circulating PCSK9 level. And apparently, this woman is LC. She has no diabetes, no fatty liver, no hypertension, suggesting that the, full, the PCSK9 deficiency in human 
as not some uh, as a good uh, safety uh, safety profile. There are also some uh, more abundant data with some patient with heterozygous PCS canine loss of function mutation. And once again, concerning the role of PCS canine in glucose homeostasis, in the ARIC cohort, there was no increase in diabetes in patients with PCS canine loss of function. So these data are, are clearly reassuring, but we need perhaps to more decipher and to more explore the global phenotype of this rare patient. The second approach is the analysis of the clinical trial with PCS canine inhibitors. And we have to now, we have to look at the other aspect rather than only lipid metabolism, LDL cholesterol level. So we have to look at the glucose parameters, A1C, fasting plasma glucose level, and also to blood pressure to see if the concern observed in mouse model translate in human. I think the priority for research, there are many priorities. We have to more decipher the mechanism of action of PCS canine concerning the regulation of the LDL receptor, the binding to the LDL receptor and the pathway leading to the degradation of LDL receptor in the lysosome pathway. To identify some partners of PCS canine, it is very uh, uh, amazing that after 10 years of research, we have identified very few proteins and partners uh, in association with PCS canine. And, also, and of course, we have to go further to uh, more uh, decipher the mechanism of PCS canine in the other tissues and the liver.